Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you doing today? How are you? How was your weekend? I hope it was good. Please, please tell me. I love hearing from you. There's a comment section. Go there. My weekend was slow. Long, but good. Uh, and slow. You know, I, uh, Keely asked to spend the night with me Friday night and have a friend over, so she, they did that. And so that kept me up quite a bit that night, and I just played Skyrim all night, because I've been playing Skyrim, but then the rest of the weekend, I focused on the new company, the new business, the new the new software, the new version of the old version of the software. Uh, if you don't know, I've recently launched a tech company, uh, a tech startup, uh, if you want to call it that, where uh, some software that I had previously written for my agency, I am uh, taking ownership of and recreating it uh, better, more functionality, uh, because the clients that currently use it want to continue using it and more clients keep calling me saying, we want this. How do we get this? So I, I'm not positive that it's going to be, you know, my future uh, financial stability, but it's at least going to be a sizable um, kind of supplementary, supplementary income to do this. And so I'm putting a lot of energy into it. And the thing is this time around, the first time I wrote the software, I uh, went to a pitch meeting. Um, we discussed what their needs were, the way that I could, uh, fill those needs, what I could and could not do at that juncture. You know, when you go to a meeting like that, it's always, uh, can you do this? 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 And eventually you have to say yes, but the more check marks we put on this list, the less likely this is going to all work out, you know, great. So let's set our expectations a little differently. Let's say, what is the main problem we're trying to f fix? And in this situation, it was just a simple reporting tool. We just need a simple reporting tool, a simple verification. Okay, let's do that. And then the rest of the stuff is good to have in mind because it will drive me, my, the developers, way of modeling the software so that in the future I can just plug the rest of this stuff in. So that's what we did. I, I walked away with, you know, like a, a couple of pages in a, in a legal pad full of notes. You know, I wanted to do, positively needed to do a few things. Um, and I built that. I built that off of those notes and that was it. I went, I literally went down these notes check marked and done and uh, shipped it and it's been working great. Since that time I've added quite a bit of functionality and because of that, I never got to go back and rework the old code that was written when I was still basically, you know, uh, just seat of the pants stuff and um, it needs fixed. And so this new opportunity, this new way to trick this, take this software that I already written, take all the lessons that I learned from that and recreate it into something more useful going forward is, uh, is where I'm, where my mind space is right now. Well, last week I read a, I read a really, really interesting article from like 2001 or 2002. It was linked on Hacker News. Um, if you're aware of what Hacker News is, great. If you're not, Google it, maybe you'll find it. It's not a, it's not a talked about place, but it's a talked about place. If you know what it is, then you know what it is. And uh, I was, somebody linked this article from some guy named Joel, I think was his name, from like the early 2000s. He used to be a Microsoft engineer and he wrote this whole post in this like multi-part series about writing a functional specification. A specification is simply, we need to do this and this is what it needs to look like. And there you go. And it gives everybody involved a, a roadmap essentially that, like, you know, like a turn by turn roadmap for how this, this should work. If this is my login page, these are the elements that are going to be on that page. And this is what happens when I click on them. If it, if, if I have to verify this information, these are the possible outcomes of verification. Either this is wrong, this is wrong, both are wrong, one is wrong, both are right, that sort of thing. What, what is this going to return? I should have like the information and it, but it's not a technical specification. It's a functional specification, meaning that this is the user, the, the way the user is going to interact. I need to write those actions out. And I've seen these dozens of times. Uh, I was in the Marines, for instance, I, I've written specifications for all kinds of things, but I've never really done it for my own stuff because 
it's just me. I'm the developer. Like, uh, it's not like I have to share this vision with a with a teammate, or I have to hand off this this manual to a, a group and say, "This is what we're building. Let's do this." Uh, it's just me. So having a checklist on a notepad has been good enough, but it hasn't. That's the that's the the truth of the matter is, if it was good enough, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be rewriting the code because it, what ended up happening is, um. I can't give you any specifics because I don't recall, but there's always those instances where I think, okay, I need a, I need a thing to do this, and that's what I write on my checklist, do this, all right? So um, say it's something as simple as uh, set the, the current date to the input date. Cool, so they do that. And then when they hit submit, it, you know, it leaves that in there, or they can change it. But what if they change it to a past date? Does it even accept that? Maybe it Maybe it, for some reason, it automatically says if it's not a future date, then it just updates to the current date. But they were trying to put something in from a while ago. Well, I didn't think of that on my checklist, and it didn't occur to me while I was coding because I was just in creativity mode based off of this checklist that said do these six things. I was doing exactly those six things. Well, well so this, this week I decided I'm going to write a functional spec for this thing just because I really need to have it all ironed out before I even put fingers to keyboard. I've already put fingers to keyboard. I'm not going to lie to you about that. But this gives me, um, essentially, what I'm doing is making a very robust checklist. And it's giving me a lot of uh, time to process it mentally before I ever start writing the code. And it's actually fascinating. I'm really interested in the process. And I hope to, um, I've already got like the first couple of screens done. And I will probably share the document uh, in the very near future, just so you can read like what a functional spec is and we can talk about it. And maybe you can pick some points out in my functional spec and say, Hey, that's really stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> but, um, again, it's not, it's not written to be a technical document that says we're going to use these functions or this library. It's just simply, this is what happens when the user clicks here. This is what happens when the user clicks here. These are the elements that should be there. Not necessarily how they're styled, what they look like, but just here's the here's the elements. If you've ever worked on a on a team, you've probably had to look at specs, and uh, you know it's it's essentially blueprints for owls, and it's not written in stone blueprints either. It's not something that I can't say I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to change it on the fly, but it gives me a, a way to essentially write the code twice. I'm writing the code once in from the perspective of this is what the user is going to do. And then I can take those notes and redo it all in the language of why well, I'm using PHP. Um, so it's been really fun. It's actually been a really, really fun experience. If you've never written a functional spec for any of your software, any of your scripts, I would say give it a shot. You never know what what you might find in that process that you hadn't have thought of that you don't now have to go chase as a bug when in reality it wasn't a bug. It was just failure to see through uh, all the possible outcomes <laughs> of you doing or not doing something. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're at. That's where I'm at. And that's what I did a lot this weekend. I wrote a lot of, a lot of the, uh, probably 10 pages or so, and uh, I got more to do. And then we're going to start actually coding. Uh, in earnest. I haven't done that yet. And that's coming. Um, my head hasn't been, hasn't been quite right recently. I, I know you all know that I've, I've gone through a whole lot this year, but my head hasn't been in the right spot for me. So I've been just kind of vegging and playing Skyrim and playing with Keely. And, uh, my oldest daughter came over last week one night and spent, uh, some good quality time with me. And, and that really helped me a lot. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being my friends. I really do appreciate you so very much. I can't even begin to explain it. And uh, let's, you know, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll, we'll keep this thing rolling. <laughs> hey, Doc, wait. I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from Wikipedia. Why is Arby's called Arby's? The name Arby's is based on R.B., the initials of Raphael Brothers. The Raphael Brothers opened the first new restaurant on Boardman, Ohio, just outside of Youngstown on July 23, 1964. They initially served only roast beef sandwiches, potato chips, and soft drinks. Arby's.